And welcome to Lady Ada. Hey everybody, and welcome to a desk of the Lady Ada. It's me, Lady Ada. We're here at my desk. With me is Mr. Lady Ada also. Yep. Got a couple of updates. We were traveling quite a bit, but now we're back on home turf. Can't stop the signal. Can't stop it. So let's show what we're doing and what we're, we've done and what, what's going on today and what we'll be showing off tonight. And go to the... Uh, overhead when you get a chance yeah so first up we've got um a button box that no and pedro made remember we we designed this in um circuit python so it's got like a feather m0 and it's got like all these buttons six buttons you can see so um we're going to set that up so that you can use this as your control box for um uh for controlling wirecast yeah so we're going to do that um Next up, uh, you have these. Yeah, I had a question things. for you because what these are um, Alexa certified, mm -hmm. so they work with the uh, Amazon computer tubes. And what I wanted to do was find out from you, oh Lady Ada, um, how much this? current can go through it. Okay. Well, this one says uh, 120 volt AC, so it makes sense, and then 10 amps, so resistive. Yeah. Um, so what do you want to? What do you want to? Well, this with? I, I want to have it turn on the lights, and or the setup over here. Well, each of those lights I think runs from what was it a, a twenty four volt, three amp. What yeah. is it twenty four? No, it's is it twenty four or twelve? Do you remember what the voltage is on this? It's twenty four. I think it's twenty four volts, and I think it's like maybe an amp or two. Okay, so I'm probably so, okay. Yeah. I mean, what's so the, by the way, what's the worst that can happen if I plug this in, I have it as an IoT device, and I use it as a basically a relay? And, well, 10 amps is quite a bit. I mean, and it, turn it on and off it's with basically, my voice. It's basically be okay? 1,000 watts. Well, but what's the worst that can happen? It just won't work? I don't know, the fuse might blow, but it's, it's probably... The fuse inside of it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's Okay, but simple. like nothing's going to happen to the equipment, right? No. Okay. Well, no, so this can cares? do 10 amps, but you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's the... the 24 volt adapters is a uh, DC DC so it's it's not like it's one amp one amp it's actually much yeah. less it's like okay. you know, quarter so amp uh, I'll let everybody know which one works better and I got then, two different uh, ones like a tenth of an amp and then this yeah. is the goal is to say computer show time and then all the power gets turned on this says 15 amp maximum load it doesn't say whether it's resistive or not but I'm assuming that's resistive yeah, so that so this is even more. more this yeah. is like really chunky this yeah. is basically as much as you can get out of a circuit most yeah. circuits are about 15 amp fused so this will, you know, basically, you can put everything on this switch. I might. And it would easily be able to handle I have two it. of those. I have two of each. This one seems a little bit nicer. It's bigger. And also, like, it has a light on the side. Looks There's like a light it. on the side, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And they have a, you can turn it on. Yeah, the other manually. one has a light on the side, too. Does it? Yeah, look. See? Is that a LED, you think? I think so. You can plug it in and find out. We will. But, yeah, I think, I mean, this one looks okay, but this one is, like, nice. Yeah. This one feels like it has a full Linux computer in it. It it does. Yeah, this one. This one feels like it has an actual relay in it. I think this one might be a. Um, I don't know if it has a relay. Okay. It's not. It's not quite. I mean, this is like the right size to have a chunky relay in it. All right. Well, I'll use this one. That's the first one. Fifteen amp. Yeah. Plenty. That, I mean, it's a full circuit. Already. So um, let's do what you're going to do tonight, which is okay. a big deal. This is the feather wing microscope uh, microscope assembly. Yes. I'm going yeah. to assemble a microscope. No, I'm going to assemble a feather wing. Yeah. So on my compi, can you uh, go to the oh, yeah. compi? We'll eventually make it so I can press the button. Won't even... We'll automate you. I'm going to go place you with the shell script. You took my gerb. I'm going to go place you with the Python script. Yeah. Um, so this so. is a little miniature TFT feather wing. I got these really adorable miniature TFTs. They're 160 by 80 pixels, but they're very small. And um, they're like for like OLED replacements, but they're color. So it's full color. Um, very adorable. So I made a little feather wing and I had extra space. So I put two buttons over here and a little like a five way selector. And um, one of the problems with the feather wings is, you know, I want to make sure that they're all cross compatible. Like, you know, if I design this, it works with ESP8266 and it works with, um, you know, the feather Hazar and it works with the ESP32 and it works with the feather M0 and the 324 and like all that good stuff. So I want to minimize um, the pin usage as much as possible. So one of the things I did is, for example, um, I have to use most C and S clock because this is a serial, you know, it's SPI, and you, you have to use the S hardware SPI. 
I made it so you can um, have software jumpers or hardware jumpers for uh, chip select in DC. So you have a couple options. Uh, it's hard to tell, but this one, these are closed and, and these other two sets are open. And then for the reset pin, I actually put it through an IO expander and so did the, uh, the buttons as well. So there's uh, four directional buttons and press in. So there's five buttons here and then six, seven. And then I also put the backlight and um, the TFT reset also on the GPIO expander. I found this pretty good one. Uh, DigiKey. Uh, it's the PCA6416. So what I liked about this one is it's pretty cheap. It's only like 50 cents. Um, it's very small. It's QFN, which I like. QFN is actually kind of, in my opinion, the easiest to pick and place component. I think uh, TQFPs, like the, the leads actually can get bent. These, I've almost never had a problem with QFNs, especially, you know, 0.5 uh, millimeter pitch ones. These, these seem just fine to me. So I put um, pretty much all of the GPI I could onto the expander. So I've got the buttons, backlight, and the TFT reset. So, you know, it has 16 GPIO. I don't use all of them. I use only uh, uh, nine, but, you know, that's fine. Uh, it's actually cheaper to get a 16-pin GPIO expander um, than it is to get 8-bit. And um, so it's nice that it'll do all the button handling, and I won't have to worry about, like, on the ESP266, there's not enough buttons, uh, pins for each button. This way the expander takes care of it. You know, it's not a big deal. So that's cool. So I did that. So I got prototypes, and I thought I'd put it together. Right. That's what I'm gonna do. Go to the microscope. I'm gonna go to the microscope. Come over to the sniffly. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. You're there. Yeah, so here I am. And so I've got the PCB and yeah. I've got some parts. I'm gonna go the microscope now. All right, so yeah, go for it. Okay, so this is the PCB. So I thought I'd start with the, uh, the toughest component first. Oh, I forgot to turn on my. Turn on my. Uh, Soldering iron. As far as I know, this is the only live soldering video on right YouTube. Now? Yeah. yeah. So if you're not liking and sharing and hearting, then um, hearts. You know, I demand hearts. You know, the most important part of any video is the audience. So now's your time to shine. Give me hearts. Okay. So this is that chip. This is the GPIO expander. So we'll put that together. It has a center pad, but honestly, the center pad is a thermal. It's not. Um, it's not a, a signal connect, so I'm not going to solder that part in. This is the chip, and then you can see to indicate pin one, it has a little bit of a notch. So you can see the NXP logo. One or two. So there you go. So good. Looks like I got the right pin out. Iron, get some solder, and let's see. Let's uh, now I'm trying out these, um, trying out this stick vise with the uh, with the, the better heat resistant grips. This is like a PT, uh, PFTE. Teflon. Okay, so let's put some solder there. And then let's pick up this part. There you go. Okay, so I've learned press down because I don't have any, even though it looks like I have depth perception. Actually, I was, I was reading about it. So the, the even this is a, a you know, it's, it's a bifocal. Like, you know, there's two eyes that I look through. I don't see stereo because, um, you know, I'm actually looking with two eyes through a single uh, magnification, right? There's not actually two separate, like, uh, magnifications. So, mm -hmm. so your depth perception kind of um, suffers a little bit. That's okay. All right. So there you go. So now it's tacked down. That's good. edge okay I could I could shove this over it's a little bit off I mean it's not bad but um, yeah I want to kind of I want to shift this over so let's do that so what I'll do is I'll I'll nudge it very gently while I'm heating so heat and then just give it a little bit of nudge okay Again. 
Yeah, I mean, it's better. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's way better. Let's look at the, uh, the other side. Thank you, Jay, for tweeting that this is the only live soldering on YouTube right now. Yeah. So again, it's like, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Another thing I can do is I can solder everything and then uh, hit it with the heat gun and it will like center itself. Yeah. So let's... Uh, I tend to center down. myself after I'm hit with the heat gun. Yeah. I think this is good enough for now. Okay, so let's... Uh, Let's drag solder the rest. And this is also a new mask I'm trying. So this is a green matte mask. So you can see it's got kind of a nice matte uh, finish to it. And it's quite nice. You can see it's, uh, it's pretty good quality. Like the definition, the pad definition is quite good. Let's turn it over. Yeah, for the random folks who keep asking, yeah, this is actually live. We live. did this live. Yeah, this is live. We do it live. There you go. There you go. Okay, and then for the final row, I'm actually going to uh, remove this and turn it around so that I can can get in there. Oh no, sorry, I want to, well, I can't, hmm. maybe let's put it on top. Just be careful, hold it with my hand. I guess I should mention that the um, coupon code Parker, P A R K E R, still works right now, so you can get ten percent off. I. Uh, it's a little cold, but this is fine. I didn't, I didn't take the coupon code down. Okay. So people can get ten percent off if they want to support shows like this online. Let's move on. So. Thank you, Chris, for tweeting. Thanks for tweeting. Yeah. Okay. Is the chip fairly resistant to being damaged by heat? Oh, uh, this is nothing. This is nothing. Yeah, this is no big deal. Ain't no thing. Ain't no thing. We could fly this into the sun. You could totally fly into the sun. Okay, let's and do And that's why the code was Parker, because there is the Parker solar probe. Yeah. The Earth is finally giving up, and we're just throwing stuff at the sun. Cool. We're done. Where were the sun? Friendship is banned. Okay. We're at war with the sun. Let's see. So I need some 10k resistors. What are uh, what are the best EEPROM and I squared C out there? Do you, um, have, do you have opinions, Lady you Ada? Know, Problems are going to be kind of the same. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get whatever speed you need. I got my book with all my parts in it. So let's see. I need about 10k. But I'm not picky. Okay, 10k. Grab the tape. You know, all together with Facebook, Twitch, Periscope. And YouTube, there's thousands of people that are watching this. That's so. Yeah, and so you know, I always hear, I always hear that, I, I always hear that maybe, maybe there's not enough interest in content like this on the web. But I actually say there's evidence against that because they're all here. Yeah. And uh, none of these platforms pl uh, promote um, STEM education. Sorry, they don't, and other things. But if they did. There'd be tens of thousands. All right, we got our 10K, so let's do those next. I like how you can actually see the values 103. So 
So 1.0 with 10 to the 3. Sorry, 10. Yeah, 10 to the 3. So 10K. Wow. Or 10 plus three zeros. It's going to be easier to remember. These are tiny. They are tiny. They're a 6 and 3. They're not, they're not so bad. You can, you can definitely do them by hand. You can do them by hand without a microscope. Oh, oh two of ones, uh, yeah. I wouldn't want to do. Okay. Yeah, they don't want to know the truth. Exactly. This is the best possible version of the truth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There you go. 10Ks are done. Some okay. news. We'll have an article in the next volume of 2600 Summer. We just submitted our article, so that's cool. Button. Big button. Okay. Let's get these buttons on. These you want to press down because yeah, you can see it's very hard to see the depth. I can't really, I mean, it's like, it's not really 3D. Like, I don't see 3D. Like, oh. You guys definitely don't, because you're is, is there a way to check the connection after you solder? Uh, I just do visually. Okay. Lady is the optical inspector. Yeah, I know. Okay, let's go back here. And... You can kind of see the fillet. I always say fillet, because I'm like always really hungry. Yeah. Do you like the fillet, lady? The fillet. And what's neat is I don't need pull-ups or pull-downs for these buttons because it's built into the IO Expander. Yeah. That's what I like about the IO Expander. That's cool. Built-in pull-ups, pull-downs. Okay. Why don't you use uh, hot air soldering for all this? Because it's hard to like keep things in place. I think it actually takes longer. So, and then you have to paste everything and it's not as cool looking under the microscope. So I just, I didn't do it this way. I could, I mean, I could, like in the office, I, I use hot air more, but uh, at home I, I just solder. And there's like, there's not that many parts. And this is, a, it's not a big deal. Close to done. We've got this uh, little joystick. It's kind of big, but you can see how tall it is. Kind of out of focus. And just grab it. I'm absolutely channeling Serenity tonight. For what? What's, what's Serenity? It's one of those science fiction movies I think you can watch. Um, we watched Minority Report. Yeah. That was, that was the first time you saw Beginning 10, right? Uh, well, I didn't see Beginning 10 last night, but yeah. it's the first time I've seen it in quite a long time. Yeah. What's the heat on that iron? Um, 650. 650. A little cold, maybe. Yeah. I'm not feeling the cold, but. Also, this tip is, you know, this part in particular is kind of, uh, is kind of big. Yeah. How do you clean off the extra flux off the board? 
Uh, I don't. It's no clean. Yeah. Thank you, it M. It's kind of messy, but it, it's actually fine. M likes the shows. Who does? M. M. I don't think it's M. Night Shyamalan, yeah. but I also watched The Village. I had that in the background playing. Yeah. It's a twist. Okay. <laughs> the other thing that Lady Ada and I decided, and y'all in the chat can do this, we talked about movies that had a fictional book in it. And the reason that I was talking about this was because there was two movies back to back, and it yeah. was The Ninth Gate, and then it was Michael Clayton. Both of those movies have fictional books in them. And then we got into a discussion, which movies have fictional books in it? And we talked about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. We talked about um, maybe Never Ending Story. I have to look at that one again. Any movie that has a fictional book as part of the plot. Yeah. Yeah. There are there some debates. Yeah. I thought that would be a fun playlist. Okay, so this is the TFT, and the TFT kind of like it bends over, like you solder it this way, with um, the flex connector, and it is soldered on. It's not, it doesn't, I mean, you could theoretically try to find a connector that fits this, but um, usually it's not. You can even see like, yeah, this these holes are designed for, um, the solder to flow through and then when you're done it folds over and you tape it down so that's how how this works you can see what it would go there and it's got a protective thing on it and then here actually you can see the chips this is the actual chip and this is like this fpc that comes in and here's like the chip and then it connects to the tft uh, you know what ghostbusters have uh tobin spear guide that's a good one that's true oh, yeah see that's good we yeah that see the, and you know what was funny is we said that this is a really good problem for like watson or siri or google home like you know siri play me all of the movies that have something to do with a fictional book but it can't do it yet yeah. but humans can do it really good anyways um why not use a flux pen to uh prepare the pads I could, but I don't need to. Yeah. So you see, I just, I put some paste down and then, I mean, there's, there's, um, the pads are w well defined here. So if you put solder down and then you just heat them up, you can see that they just, they flow very nicely. All right. So, um, shouldn't you still clean no clean flux? No. It's no? no clean. Yeah. No clean means no cleaning. You don't yeah. Clean it. I mean, like there, there are some very rare situations where you might want yeah, to. Yeah, we don't have a link to the microscope we're using now because we don't want people to buy something that's not going to work out. We're still testing a bunch. Yeah. We're testing them live. As in, you're watching now. Because we're crazy. So actually, you know, in production, we don't solder this way. What we do is, um, in production, we use a big flat solder. Uh, like a, you know, the, it's like a, a blade. And you can do it all at once. It's quite nice. We're um, really good at it. Is there free software you prefer for building your PCB boards? Yeah, probably KiCad. Cheapest yeah, way to print it with good quality. Um, probably Oshpark. It's in the boards. Yeah. Right. And you can go back and you can you can add more solder if you like. But yeah, this is this is more you know when we do in production, this this takes like two seconds. Like yeah, seconds. the Living Dead uh, is another one. You mentioned that one. Right? Um, I mentioned Evil Dead. Evil Dead. Any of the dead things are probably fine. I said a little, yeah, a lot of like things yeah. like the Chronomicon stuff. Yeah. You said Hitchhiker's Guide. I said maybe the Princess Bride. Yeah. We, we had debate. a yeah we had a few. See what other ones that we thought of. Yeah, but I thought it was weird because those movies came on back to back. So I'm like, mm -hmm. what do, what do they have in common? Yeah. In Michael Clayton, it was, um, it was, uh, Realm and Conquest, and it's a fake book. Yeah. And in Ninth Gate, it's the Ninth Gate, yeah. All right. Um. All right, this is good. I've not watched the series Humans yet. Uh, what soldering station do you use? Right now, I'm using my Hacko. It's a Hacko FX88. 
Yeah. And the reason I'm using it instead of a Metcal is when I do soldering videos here, I want to show that you don't need to have a $500 soldering iron. Yeah. You can use a $100 one. I don't think I'd go less than 100 That would be a little tough. Yeah. By the way, like everything that we use is off the shelf. We, we like to only use things that are in the store. So all this like video stuff, yeah. anyone can do this. I wish they would. Let me see the TFT. It's yeah. Cool. Here, let me zoom into it. It's not on. It's full of stars. Yeah, you can see. Can you see it? No. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Now on, on the on the corner, you kind of can. Can you can you light it up at all? Because I can I can I can barely see the the um, green and the red. Yeah. yeah. Why is it so shadowed? Put a light on it. Well. I already have one on it. Do you want to oh. put another light? No, nah, that did nothing. It's weird. It doesn't show up very well on the yeah. camera. Yeah. Wait, would the, when you when you pass the light over at one spot, it actually showed it a little bit more. Okay, okay you can kind of see it now? Sort of? Yeah, see it? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the TFT really, really, really close up. You can maybe zoom into it more. No, this is the max zoom. That's max? All right, yeah. Okay. So you can if Oh, I look, the matrix. If I zoom out, you can see it a little bit better. But you can see every individual little Is the solder use uh, lead or lead free? I'm using lead solder. Because if I have to use a $100 iron, I'm going to use leaded solder. Yeah. So then I can see I kind of Okay, you it. you can see the screen now. Yeah, yeah. We can figure that out later. Yeah, ring, uh, ring, ring. Oh, that's not, that's good. Whatever that's you just nice. did. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. TFT, so you can see the the dot pitch. Yeah, we can we can put a light on that. Yeah. But this is fine. Small. Okay. Well, that's it. That's all I got. All right. Put this together. Okay. Let's thanks everybody. Yeah, Thirty minutes on the dot. Out. Thanks, Lady Ada. Um, codes Parker. Use it all lowercase. Apparently, I didn't realize that it was case sensitive. Um, we'll be doing more shows and more. Thank you, community of cool people that are in the chat. Yeah, there you go. The camera's like, what yeah. did you just do? Yeah. But yeah. yeah. You can adjust the brightness here. Yeah. But yeah, I like to have it here. Otherwise, it gets blown out. So yeah, this is a little TFT. So next up, I will I have to write the code for it. Do you want to show them the overhead really fast before we go? Yeah, let's go to the overhead. I can show what I just did. So this is, um, yeah, it's not yeah. taped down. What? Let's see, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a little feather wing add-on board. You've got the directional buttons. This goes up, down, left, right, and in. A button, B button, reset button, and then that um, GPIO expander, and then this is the TFT. All right, here's a question. What's the best, cheapest, um, SWD programmer for blank AT SAM MCUs? Um, you know, you can use anything that will work with open OCD, but um, I really suggest a J Link. Like, mm. J Link's just, they work within Atmel Studio, and I think that's nice. But Atmel also has their own SWD, you know, bore. I don't know what it's called, like the eDebug or something, and you can buy yeah. it for 30 bucks on DigiKey. Um, I haven't used it. But that's also directly supported by ML Studio. I would use, even though you can like, you know, I, I, I program the chips with a Raspberry Pi um, in production. That's not what I use for prototyping because it's it's a little annoying and you can't do it from within ML Studio. But anything that supports open OCD, any, any hardware interface like a FTDI chip or whatever, you can use it. It just won't work in ML Studio and you might not be able to like yeah. do a lot of... Um, do a lot of stuff with it, but oh, a J-Link what, works well. What's good practice after this? Are you going to, like, wash your hands? Are you going to, like, Yeah, I wash my hands. What do you do after this? Yeah, I wipe off the cat. No, yeah. I um, I wash my hands, and, um, I mean, I have to finish some more soldering, but then I'm going to wipe my hands, and then, um, you know, just don't, don't, like, eat right afterwards. I mean, it's, like, it's on your hands. It's not, you know, I'll tell you actually something about, like, cause I, I looked up lead solder poisoning, and um, it was kind of this, that funny case where they, they, there was a family that kept getting lead solder poisoning. And it was like the only case of like poisoning by lead solder. And they thought, you know, they like 
you know, the doctors were like, well, you should wash your hands and stuff. And then it turned out that um, they chewed on the solder. The, the whole family liked to chew on solder. It actually sounds kind of fun. But because um, it's like soft and, and, and like metallic. And so they were eating it. And that's how they got poisoning. So it's like, don't eat the solder, I guess, is the yeah. moral of the story. Uh, but other than that, I think, yeah, just wash your hands with soap. And you're good to go. Don't eat the solder. Don't eat the solder. Yeah. You know. All just, right. Well, and don't like, don't. Uh, yeah. You know. That's that's it. I think you're good. Yeah. For the amount of soldering I do, I don't do that much. Yeah. If you're in a production environment, of course, have a fume extractor and have you know oh, have third. process. All right. Yep. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, we'll do more of this. Um, pick up some kits and stuff. Yeah, maybe they'll get this up and running. It's yeah. gonna be cute. One sixty by eighty pixels, so it's a pretty high res. Yeah. You can write little games or graph things. I think it'll be a fun feather wing. And pretty fast to put together too, which is good. Yeah. Good sign. All right, that's it, Lydia. Yay! All right, later. Bye, Bye. everybody.